Hello friends, today we are going to see the concept of swapping. Basically, everyone knows why we are going to perform the swapping. When the n number of processes are going to be loaded into the main memory and if there is not available free space to load all these processes into the main memory, at that time we need to use the virtual memory from the secondary device. Now here we need to swap the process from the main memory to virtual memory and from virtual memory to the main memory. While performing this operation at least the part of the process must be contained in the primary memory. So now that is nothing but the swapping. To perform all these operations we need to use the swap device. The swap device it monitors the amount of available primary memory and may periodically write a process to a secondary memory device that is called the swapping device. Basically this swapping device will create a more space in the primary memory to perform the swap in and swap operation. Now let's see the allocation of swap spaces. The first point is managing the space on the swap, swap device. We can call it as a also allocation of swap space. While performing all these operations, we need to focus on three things. The first one is kernel allocates a group of contiguous blocks to the swap device. Means this swap device is in the virtual memory that is in the secondary device. While Allocating this swap device, we need to allocate the contiguous group of blocks to this swap device. That is our first condition. The second one is allocation of swap space is transitory. It totally depends on the pattern of the process scheduling because every time the kernel will schedule the process in a different patterns. That's why this swap space is a transitory. The third one is the process that resides on the swap device will eventually migrate back to the main memory. This is going to be done because the further execution of process is going to be continued and this will be happen when the process is completely migrated into the main memory. Basically this will happen when the main memory have that much of space available for the process. Now here there is one more important concept is nothing but the map. So now in this swap space we will have the map. Basically this map is a free space for the swap device that is in the in core table that is called the map. Basically this map is nothing but an array which consists of the address of the allocatable resource and the total number of resources units available there. Let's take the example here, how basically this swap map is going to be looked. Here this swap map has basically the two fields. The first one is address field and another one is a unit field. Here address field will indicate the starting address of the total number of available units. So now here in this example the starting address is 1 and the total number of units available are 10,000. Now let's take one example here, there will be the three process. Process 1 needs the 100 units, process 2 needs 50 and then process 3 needs the again 100 units. So how we are going to perform all these operations? Let's see in the next slides. So basically there will be the four diagrams. Now here this is our initial stage that is nothing but the initial map. The address is 1 and total number of available units are 10,000. Now the process 1 requirement is 100 units. So now here we need to update the address means we are going to increment the address by 100 that is 101 and now here we have allocated that 100 units to one process. So now here we need to reduce the total number of units. So now here the count is 9900 units. So now the process 2 is again requesting for the 50 units. So now here we need to update the address unit address field from 101 to 151 and now here we need to decrement the total number of available units because we are already allocated to the process 2. So now here the final count is 9850 units after allocation of process 2. Now the process 3 is requ requesting for the 100 units again. 
so now here this in the previous time in uh, diagram c the starting address is 151 so here we, we are going to allocate the 100 units so here we need to increment it by the 100 so now the address is 251 and we here we need to reduce the total number of available units by the 100 that is 9750 units so now this is the final count here we'll have the starting address is 251 for the total number of available resources or we can call it as a unit those are nothing but the 9750 that is nothing but the allocating swap space now while freeing the swap space here we need to concentrate on the freeing the swap space now initial will have the 251 address at 251 address will have the 9750 units so now here we need to delete or we can call it as a release the total number of units from the 101 address now here we have release 50 units from the 101 so now here it's 101 and that is released from the 101 means what we'll have the 50 more units available at 101 address now here next one is 251 to 9750 those are the available units now again here now here we are going to delete or release the 100 units from the address 1 which were already allocated in the previous example so now here when we will delete this 100 units concentrate on the concept here because when we are going to delete this 100 units again after immediate of 50 unit so now here we need to combine both the units into the single unit now the first entry here is address 1 and total number of available units are 151 and now and the second entry will have the 251 address uh, starting address with 9750 available units so here i freeing the swap space if we'll have the consecutive uh, free memory uh, locations at that time we need to combine these entries so now here we'll see the algorithm for allocating the space from the maps so now here it's a very simple one we are going to take the input as a map address which we have already seen we'll have the two fields and now here we will request the number of units the output is address if successful zero otherwise the first here we need to check for the every ent map entry now if requesting map entry can fit into the current map entry then enter into the condition now if requested unit is equals to is equals to number of units in entry then delete the entry from the map it means we are going to reducing the total number of units else just adjust the start address of the entry and then return original address of the entry now that is nothing but the swap space uh, sorry that is nothing but the allocation of swap space from the maps thank you for the next part of this topic search for the swapping swapping process in and out in unix operating system concept uos thank you